Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video review of this book, The Complete Idiot's Guide to Memes. So, I'll show you the back cover. There's the book. Um, and I approach this book with relatively low expectations. My self-esteem usually prevents much involvement with the Idiot's Guide series of books. However, my initial reaction to the book was a pleasant surprise. The book actually has some interesting and useful content. It's organized into neat sections, and I'll just um, put down the microphone and hold it up so you can see for a moment or two. So that gives you some idea about the way the book is laid out, and there's the, one of the contents pages, and it's got an index at the back. And um, the fact that it's broken down into um, such neat sections makes it relatively easy to scan and find things in, and the contents and index pages are quite comprehensive and good. Um, however, my second reaction was not quite so positive. I quickly found some mistakes. Um, however, to start with, an overview of the contents of the book. Um, it starts out with an introduction. It gives a definition of what a meme is, and then continues by saying, maybe a way to clarify the definition is to determine what isn't a meme, and then it lists three disqualifying criteria, saying a meme must be original, a meme must be digestible, and a meme must be easily understood. And the first and the third are pretty much contrary to what most people understand by the word meme, um, and the second one's pretty debatable. And then there's a chapter on the science of memetics, and it gives um, some incorrect definitions in there as well. It talks about hook, um, copying Douglas Hofstadter's bait and hook distinction. It gives bait and hook, but the definition of hook um, isn't right. Um, and then it gives incorrect definitions of vector and host as well. Um, and what it says about hook is that hook is what attracts us to memes, which is not what everybody else uses by the term hook. Um, and then it claims that people are not vectors, which is contrary to the standard usage of the term vector in epidemiology. And it says hosts are those that send memes, while it's better to picture hosts as meme recipients, really. Um, and then there's a section on how memes spread, broken down into chapters about verbal transmission, transmission over the internet, and marketing. And then there's a big section about memes in action, which covers all the different sorts of memes in the world in more detail. Um, pop culture, technology, philosophy, pornography, religion, politics. And I found this section one of the most boring parts of the book, unfortunately, and it's quite a large section, so that wasn't ideal. Um, then there's a miscellaneous section, which deals with memeplexes, retro memes, doomsday memes, hoaxes, scams, and urban legends. Um, as well as dormant memes and toxic memes, and some of this material is a bit more interesting. And then the next section is about immunity, allergies, censorship, and techniques for getting, getting disinfected. And then lastly is a section that I found most interesting. There's a 50-page section at the end devoted to meme science, and it starts out with a selection about classic meme theories, um, covering Richard Seaman, and then skips on to Cloak, Cavalli, Schwarzer, E.O. Wilson, Richard Dawkins, Douglas Hofstadter, and Daniel Dennett. And then there's a section on new meme theories that covers Richard Brody, Aaron Lynch, and Susan Blackmore. And this section's a bit strange. Um, Aaron Lynch gets more coverage than Blackmore and Brody put together, which um, isn't great since Aaron Lynch's book on the subject is pretty awful, a science-free collage of armchair just so stories. The treatment of Blackmore's work is pretty cursory, and no more authors are covered apart from those three. And then there's a section on alternative theories, alternatives to memetics it's talking about. It covers some of the criticisms of memetics to start with, and then the sections on E.O. Wilson, um, Boyd and Richardson, and William Durham. Um, and these folk get a pretty small corner of the book, which seems rather unfair considering how much work they've put into the field. Um, I also wondered what had happened to all the other workers that worked on cultural evolution. Um, the science section overall seemed a bit out of date to me, and to my eyes didn't seem terribly well balanced. However, it was a pleasant surprise to see the mainstream scientific branch of cultural evolution get much coverage at all in a book about memes. Probably the biggest problem with the book is that it's a bit on the dull side. Um, the book attempts to cover all the different sorts of memes in the world, and the audiences already like to be aware of a lot of this kind of material. Um, however, though rather tedious, this is a type of content that I haven't really seen anywhere else, so perhaps it needs laying out somewhere. Um, the book shows some signs of hurried preparation and lack of research. The author embraces internalism, saying memes can only exist in a human mind, and I wish people would leave internalism alone, really. Um, there's relatively little coverage of human evolution in the book, and nor is there mention of the possibility of a me memetic takeover. 
However, it's absolutely fantastic to have another whole book about memes and memetics, and it's good that the book contains a fair quality, a fair quantity of interesting and original material. I do think that it's a bit of a shame that the book is in the form of an idiot's guide. However, one of the book's redeeming features is that it's extremely inexpensive, or at least my copy was, so if you have a limited budget for research into memes, then this is a pretty reasonable place to start. So, enjoy. <laughs>